Hey there everyone, hope you're all doing well. I've recently been testing out this, Player One's Anti-Halo Pro Filter. They asked me if I'd be interested in testing this thing out, and I just said yes. So it literally was as simple as that. As always, no strings attached whatsoever. Uh, it was entirely up to me how I went about testing this thing. And so, with a name like the Anti-Halo Pro, I think it's quite a strong claim, I decided to really put it to the test, and it's actually came up extremely well, but we're going to jump into that now. So, effectively, I've tested this out on every single rig that I could lay my hands on, uh, and I've documented some findings for you, and I'm also going to evidence some findings on the screen for you, using images that I've left deliberately as raw as possible, so no messing whatsoever. We're just going to use ASI Fits Viewer, which is going to automatically screen stretch these images for you side by side. I think it's the fairest way to do a comparison and at the end as well I will present to you a fully finished image uh, that I took also with this filter. Um, if you want a too long didn't watch for this filter by the way, uh, I'm strongly positive towards it. It's, it's a really good filter. I'm not seeing any negatives really other than the fact that it doesn't work good at f2. So those of you out there using Rasas, uh, perhaps Takashi Epsilons at around f2.8, f3.2 probably not suitable for those, definitely not suitable for the Rasa, but I've tested it at F4 and beyond, and it's absolutely perfect. Uh, no bandpass shift whatsoever around those uh, ranges. So, this filter is said to have, I think, around about 4.5 nanometers uh, full width half max at the oxygen 3 and hydrogen alpha wavelengths, and I am inclined to believe it. When we tested it against the L Enhance, which is quite a lot wider, I think around about 10 nanometers in each, or 7 or so, is clearly far narrower. Now, um, we're going to take a look at some side-by-sides here. I know it's taken two minutes to really get to this, but there's a lot to explain. Where I've basically taken shots, one after the other, using two different filters. So I'm going to be comparing Optolong's L Enhance, which is still a good filter. Uh, it just It definitely exhibits halos, so I thought it would be interesting to show you versus the Anti-Halo Pro. 20 minutes in each case, so this first image right here, NGC 7822, taken with the Anti-Halo Pro. Take a quick look at this, and we're gonna now take a look at the L Enhance. Hopefully this is coming across through YouTube's compression, but there's far less contrast visible. Uh, and also a gradient going across the image is stronger on the L Enhance because it's got less of a light pollution blocking effect. As I said, still a good filter, but Definitely been surpassed at this point, even by some other filters of Optolong's own creation too, uh, it's only fair to say. Now straight away, uh, one other thing I did notice, if we just zoom in around here, the stars on the Anti-Halo Pro are smaller, that is in tighter, I did refocus for each of these by the way, taken back to back. Then on the L Enhance, uh, as you can see, ever slightly larger, and the beginnings of a halo popping up right there. Now. I jumped onto a target then that's traditionally given a lot of trouble to many different filters actually and that is the jellyfish. Um, I've gotten one of the main stars that are troublemakers in this image and it's deliberately decentered too. You see it's left off to the top of the frame there rather than any efforts to center it up. And if we just take a look at the L enhanced version of it you can see the drop in contrast is insane between these two filters. Take uh, a quick look at the size of the halo there that's visible on the Optolong L Extreme versus the distinct lack of halo on the Anti-Halo Pro, living up to its name. But also take a look now, if you will, just across, let's say, from the bottom left of the image to the top right. You can see there's quite a strong gradient going across. If you just click on the L Enhanced, though, that gradient is ridiculously stronger so in terms of post processing these images after stacking them up it's you can have an easier time and i found this myself you will always have an easier time processing data from narrower filters uh, and that's again shown by this you can see they've got just less gradient to deal with and no halos and also an increased signal to noise take a look at the actual main target in this so it's oxygen and hydrogen mainly so here's the l enhanced data here is the Anti-Halo Pro. I <laughs> think that's pretty obvious uh, as to how big the difference is between those two 
right there if I just cycle back and forth a few times. Clearly, miles more uh, signal has came through on that Anti Halo Pro. Really good to see. Now, if we just take another quick look at the histogram tool. So, uh, here is the Anti Halo Pro. If we take a look at the average 2325 versus 2995 for the L Enhanced. So that further evidences the fact that it is a far narrower filter. Hopefully working exactly to spec. Uh, I don't have any way of actually testing this with a spectrograph or anything like that. Hopefully maybe Queeve the Laser Geek can get his hands on one of these one day uh, and do further testing with it. That would be really cool to see him using it on his rigs too. Um, but in my limited testing here, I can, I can tell you that it looks like it's working to spec or at least my particular model of it is. Um, now, I've been assured this is effectively the production model, so if you like the look of this and you buy one, that's what you should be getting. Um, now, moving on really quickly, we tested on an F4 system. This is a 10-inch Quattro on a target that's given also quite a lot of trouble in the past, the Pelican Nebula. These two stars here are particularly problematic. Uh, I did, before I started this video, fish out a couple of old shots for you to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So this is the Pelican Nebula taken with the L Extreme and a 150 PDS. And as you can see, big old halos around those two stars to deal with, right? Not very nice. It just It's not massively detracting from the image, but it does not look great, uh, I have to say. And then also on a refractor, the same filter, the same target. This was part of an old video where I compared the two. Once again, halos, right? You can see those, no problem. Whereas on this, I did get cut short on the test, but still zero halos visible. Really promising. I decided uh, before I got fully clouded out on that night to slew away to the brightest star in the sky that I could at the time, which was Vega. And once again, this is a two minute shot, I do believe, of Vega using the Anti Halo Pro. Zero Halo. What you may be able to make out, I'm not sure it'll be visible for you guys on YouTube with a little bit of compression, but very faintly, off axis is a reflection from the coma corrector. And we know it's a reflection because we can also see the defocused donut of the secondary mirror shadow right there. Um, so again, even on an extremely challenging target, no halos. Um, really good to see. Now, I had to wait a little bit to get further testing done, but when I did, I decided it was time to test yet another loadout, if you will. Uh, and this time around, I tested using my, well, Chloe's, Red Cat 51 and our old modified DSLR Canon 700D. Uh, I tested on that same region of sky in the hopes that it gives some uh, chance to show any problematic halos and nothing once again. So it's passed every single test that I've thrown at it with flying colors. I did get more data than this and I will show you that image at the end. Here is me just actually finishing working on it as I'm uh, recording this video, but I can tell you the data has been a pleasure to work with, even from just a modified DSLR in a backyard like mine, Bottle 7 Skies, right? So challenging conditions, I'm getting good shots. So if you're using something like a cooled camera, you're going to get better results than this, no problem at all, I would say. This is just 55 minute shots. So um, yeah, I've gone through everything that I wanted to do. As I've said, it's not suitable for Rasa, but anything around F4 and beyond seems to be an exceptionally good filter. I have done my absolute best. I really have to try and get this thing to show up a halo or two. Uh, nothing. Nothing. So it's past with flying colors, guys. And uh, I think it's worth the time to show you this thing on my channel. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you're in the market looking for one of these filters, it gets my seal of approval, so uh, hopefully it's going to hit the market at a good price, and I think it should pick up some traction and take things by storm. It's a good filter, so uh, I know I'm going to be using it plenty more. I hope that that's been useful to some of you guys out there. I am hopeful <laughs> also that you've made some sense out of this slightly chaotic video. But it is what it is. That's the style of my work. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. So with that, I'm going to leave it there and just say I hope you all look after yourselves. Get plenty of clear skies. And uh, we will see you in the next one. See ya.
Thank you.